This video is sponsored by Wondrium, but as always, more about today's sponsor later in the video. If you enjoy videos about human evolution, ancient structures, ancient inventions, ancient queens, uh, new archaeological discoveries, things like that, then subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon to be notified every time I upload. I do the occasional impromptu live stream. And if you want to support me, you can become a Patreon or become a channel member. Let's get into the video. We're going to take a look into the differences between the hominids and the hominins and the human evolutionary timeline. So recently I started this new playlist on the channel that I named Hominids. And since I've only spoken about the human ancestors so far, I've had many people in my comment section telling me that I used the wrong terminology for the playlist and that I should change it to Hominins. But <laughs> I'm here to tell you that I certainly did not use the wrong terminology here. I named the playlist Hominids because I plan to talk about the evolution of all great apes, all the way back down to our common hominid ancestor. And where the hominids uh, split off from the hominins, how the gorillas, the orangutan, the chimps evolved, and why they did not evolve in the same manner as us, homo sapiens, or modern humans. My name is Kaylee and in this video I'm going to tell you the difference between hominids and hominins, when the hominins split off from the hominids, why this distinction is important and the rest of the evolutionary timeline for all great apes as a quick summary. So let's start by putting this picture on screen that you see now. This is the evolutionary tree of life of humans or homo sapiens, chimpanzees, gorillas and orangutans. So let's start with the obvious, homie no idea. Yes, I mean, I really do have no idea how else to pronounce this name correctly and it sounds much more fun when I do it as in a homie no idea. So I'll just keep pronouncing it th this way. <laughs> You're gonna have to forgive me and wait, by the way, at least I now have your attention for the rest of this video. So about 20 million years ago, there was a group of homino idea, which is a branch of old world apes. The homino idea then split from the hylobatidia, which are the lesser apes, mostly the gibbons. So from there on, we move on to the homin idea. So we went from having no idea to homin idea. Ta-da! Eureka! We got there. So here we have arrived at the hominids. This is where this video becomes most interesting, or at least where the interesting bit starts. All hominids or hominideas are the great apes. This does indeed include us humans, just like the chimpanzees, the gorillas and the orangutans. I would like to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, Wondrium. Wondrium is the premier entertaining and educational video subscription service that enriches your overall life experiences with approachable, comprehensive and illuminating content. So if you're like me and always seeking ways to improve yourself and challenge your mind, then Wondrium is the perfect place for you. Their carefully curated collection of short and long form videos, tutorials, travel logs and documentaries is academically comprehensive, thoroughly researched and presented by engaging experts. It's the place for minds that wonder and they're constantly adding new content to their platform. So I recently watched The Real Ancient Egypt. Of course I did, I went to Egypt last year myself. And I have to say, my mind was blown by the legal system of ancient Egypt. It's amazing to see how the content on Wondrium can connect with things I'm interested in. And I'm sure you'll find something that will blow your mind too. So if you're looking to pick up a new hobby or skill, Wondrium has you covered. They offer courses in a wide range of topics from beer tasting and hand lettering to learning a new language. You can stream 
and enjoy their content from just about anywhere. Whether you're watching on your TV, a tablet, laptop, or phone, you can take your learning with you wherever you go. So visit wandrium.com slash history with Kaylee, or click the link in the description down below to start your free trial today and enjoy videos you won't find anywhere else. In the Homin idea, we have another split that is crucial to the understanding of the rest of this video. This is the part where the Pongine branched off from the Homin idea. The Pongine then branched off into Pongini, Korapithsu, and eventually Pongo, the orangutans. We have the Sumatran orangutan, the Tapanuli orangutan, and the Bornean orangutan. So going back to this picture that I'll put on screen again, we see where the Pongine split off away from the homin idea, but the homin idea then became the homin inia. This is where yet another important split occurred. We are seeing the ancestors of the gorillas known as the gorillini. Yeah, no, <laughs> I know it sounds like some sort of pasta dish, but no, these are the ancestors of the gorillas, the gorillini. Like it's a light, nice linguini, you know? Sorry. Of course, with the gorillas, we have the Western gorilla and the Eastern gorilla, and their common ancestor is the Gorillini. And now we finally make our way into the Hominini. The chimpanzees and us humans are part of the Homininis. Not sure if you all watching this have seen my video where I interviewed Professor Alberg from the Uppsala University about the Trachylos footprints that were found in Greece dating to some six million years ago that are the oldest hominin footprints. Professor Alberg hypothesized that the footprints at Trachylos could possibly be made by Auroran Tugenensis. And as you can see here on the picture that is yet again on screen, <laughs> we can see that Aurorin split from both the chimpanzees and us modern humans. It seems like the development of bipedalism of Aurorin occurred approximately 6 million years ago, which does coincide with the Trachylos footprints that were found at Greece. I will create a video in the future alongside Professor Alberg and maybe one or two experts about how footprints actually become fossilized. The professor has been exceptionally busy lately, but we will see more of him on the channel soon. Because yes, it has come to my attention that Professor Alberg has become a little bit of a channel favorite. So don't worry, he will be back. But okay, back to the picture that is so incredibly important to help you as a viewer understand where we are in the evolutionary timeline. So I'll put it back on screen. <laughs> The homininis then split, because if there is one thing that we have learned so far already, it's that in order for a species to evolve, they usually split into two distinct branches. And no, this does not happen overnight, which most of you guys and gals probably know. But this takes quite a long time until they are so distinctly different that we can no longer see them as the same species. So the homininis split into the pons and the Australopithecinas. So first, let's take a look into the pons, the chimpanzees and the bonobos. The pond troglodytes, better known as chimpanzees, are native to the forest and savanna of tropical Africa. The chimpanzees are divided into four subspecies. The West African chimpanzee that live in the green area on the map on screen. The Nigeria Cameroon chimpanzee that live in the grey area on screen. The central chimpanzee that live in the red area on the map on screen. And last but not least, we have the eastern chimpanzee that live in the blue area on the map on screen. The bonobos used to be seen as a subspecies of chimpanzee under the name of pygmy chimpanzee. But they are now recognized as a distinct different species within the genus Pom. The bonobos live in the Congo Basin, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, in Central Africa. So now that we have covered the pons, or can I just say this once, the paninis? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just couldn't resist. I just had to. You, you know I can't be 100% serious when I make my videos. I want to make myself a dish of gorolini with a panini on the side, okay? I mean, come on, let me have my fun. Okay, so now that we've covered the ponds, we can look into the distinct split between them and the Australopithecinas. 
The members of the subtribe known as the Australopithecines are the Paranthropus, the Kenyanthropus, Ardipithecus, and of course, the Australopithecus. It is possible that Aurorentugenensis and the Sahelanthropus should be put in here with the Australopithecines instead of with the Pons, but this is not my debate to be had, and since I have this schematic that has been made by someone far more knowledgeable than me, I will just keep to this. We have the emergence of the Australopithecus around 4.2 million years ago with the earliest member of the genus, Australopithecus anamensis. It took approximately two-ish million years, but eventually we saw the emergence of Homo happen. And the final split occurred between the Australopithecus and Homo. Do note that it was Carl Linnaeus that coined the binomial name Homo sapiens. A binomial nomenclature is a formal system of naming species by giving them a name composed of two parts, both of which use Latin grammatical forms, although they can be created from words from other languages. For those who don't know who Carl Linnaeus is, well, I mean, my older viewers will probably know who he is, but doesn't matter. He was a Swedish botanist, zoologist, taxonomist, and physician, and he's crediting for formalizing the binomial nomenclature, the system of naming organisms. I've also actually been to his grave at the Uppsala Cathedral when Professor Alberg toured me around Uppsala City. Of course, as you can imagine, I did not step on the memorial stone. And if you guys want me to create a video about Carl Linnaeus, I would be more than happy to do so. So, if you actually do want to see that, then please let me know in the comments down below. Tell me, make a video about Carl Linnaeus and I will create a video for you about Carl Linnaeus. Because he was actually quite a cool dude. <laughs> Let's keep it at that. So first we have Homo habilis that emerged around 2.3 million years ago. Homo habilis was anatomically very similar to Australopithecus and therefore not seen as the first upright man like Homo erectus. There's even some debate in the anthropological community that Homo habilis should be split into two distinct species, Homo rudolfensis and Homo gautengensis. It has also been proposed that Homo habilis should actually be placed in the genus Australopithecus as Australopithecus habilis. So for those in my comment section on my Homo erectus video that were mad at me for <laughs> Naming Homo erectus the first human, I just used the most up-to-date information from the world of anthropology for that video. And I made sure that I gave that information to you. And because there is a question about Homo habilis, I couldn't put him as the first human. Homo habilis is one of our ancestors. They were just too much alike with the Australopithecus that I cannot place them as the first upright man like Homo erectus which has been proven to be the real first upright man, like modern Homo sapiens, the most like us. So around two million years ago, Homo erectus emerged in Africa, of which the oldest fossils that we have discovered are 1.9 million years old. But like I said in my Homo erectus video, it is most likely the case that they were already existing by the time the first bones started to fossilize in the perfect conditions. Then we have Homo ergaster, some believe that Homo ergaster is actually a subspecies of Homo erectus. Others believe that it is indeed a separate species. I am not the one to make that call. If the scientific community is not sure, then I simply can't be sure either. So I can't name it as either different or the same. What we do know is that Homo ergaster is younger than the Homo erectus and they emerged around 1.7 million years ago and they disappeared around 1.4 million years ago. There is a possibility that there was a chrono species of Homo ergaster that survived all the way up to 600,000 years ago. A chrono species is a species that derived from sequential development that involved continual and uniform changes from an extinct ancestral form on an evolutionary scale. This sequence of alteration eventually produces a population that is physically, morphologically and genetically distinct from the original ancestors. 
I will mention a chrono species later in this same video, so we just move on to the next emergence of another Homo. It's time we quickly talk about Homo antecessor, a Homo species that has been recorded in the Spanish Sierra de Atapuerca. They emerged around 1.2 million years ago in the early Pleistocene, and they were the first to colonize Western Europe. Antecessor is Latin for pioneer. They got this name for a reason, it seems, as they were the first to pioneer Western Europe. They lived until approximately 800,000 years ago and used to be seen as the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens for a very long time. But it is now believed that Homo heidelbergensis is the last common ancestor before this split occurred. Homo heidelbergensis emerged around 640,000 years ago, give or take. Again, could be a little bit earlier as the oldest fossil that we currently know of dates back to 640,000 years ago. But, you know, mentioned that a couple times already. They lived mostly in Europe, but it is believed that they also did live in African and Asian areas. There are fossilized remains in all three areas, but it is unclear to which species they belong. The Middle Pleistocene is often referred to as the muddle in the middle because there's a lot of question marks and this is a place where there could possibly be some missing links. Heidelbergensis is seen as a chrono species of Homo erectus, which makes them our recent ancestor that we share with the Neanderthals. The split of Neanderthals and our ancestral line happened after the emergence of Homo heidelbergensis. We then have Homo longi, of which we only have the one skull dating back to approximately 309,000 years ago, at the latest, but 138,000 years ago at the youngest. I've made a video about Homo longi in full detail. If you haven't seen it yet, then I highly recommend watching it. I'll put the link in the description down below and it's probably one of the cards that you see pop up in the upper right corner. Then we have Homo naledi. Yes, it's a lady. They emerged in South Africa around 335,000 years ago and we have fossils of at least 15 individuals that are now discovered. But it is unclear if Homo naledi should be in the Homo genus as they have a lot of morphology in common with Australopithecus. It is possible that they are actually a descendant from Australopithecine. Homo rodensiensis emerged around 324,000 years ago in Zambia, Africa, although rodensiensis is now seen as a subspecies of heidelbergensis as they are very, very similar in their morphology. Around 300,000 years ago, the first archaic Homo sapiens remains started to fossilize in Jebel Irut in Morocco. Our ancestral line finally emerged in this long evolutionary plate. Between 400,000 years and 240,000 years ago, the first Homo neanderthalensis emerged in Europe and Western Asia. And the oldest fossilized bones are contested, but I do want to mention the possibility of this earliest emergence. As we know, Neanderthals disappeared around 35,000 years ago. I've created a video where I looked into their intelligence and I will create more videos about them in the future because I have not yet said everything I wanted to say about the Neanderthals. Next up is Homo floresiensis, emerging around 190,000 years ago in Indonesia on the island of Flores. Again, I've made a video about Homo floresiensis in detail and I highly recommend you watch it. Again, in the upper right corner, there's probably a card right now or links to already made videos are always in the description down below. I mean, absolutely check them out. They are worth your time. We then have the Denisovans. They still don't have an official name and I still wonder why. It's been a while now. Just call them Homo Denisova and be done with it as it's been taken way too long. They just need a name. The oldest fossilized remains of a Denisovan date to approximately 194,000 years ago. And they're only recognized from a few specimen. And we still do not have a Denisovan skull. We need one. Find it for me. We move up the timeline towards Nesha Ramla Homo. 
They were only very, very recently discovered in 2021 in Israel during excavations at the Nesher Ramla site. The remains that were discovered were dated to be from approximately 140,000 years ago. And as of now, there is not really much known about them, but I'm sure that as time goes by, we will learn more about them and discover who they were, what they did and all of that stuff. And I'll definitely be making a dedicated video to them in the future. So absolutely know that I will do that. We then get to an extinct archaic human species from the area of Taiwan that is currently dubbed as Homo tsaikankensis, but there are anthropologists that believe that this is actually the same species as the Denisovans. These oldest fossils are dated to be from approximately 100,000 years ago. Next up, we have Homo luzonensis. The oldest fossils of Homo luzonensis date to approximately 67,000 years ago on the island of Luzon in the Philippines. And for a while, it was actually believed that Homo luzonensis was the same species as modern humans. But eventually, after the discovery of more specimen, they were placed in their own new species. A video on luzonensis will be made in the future because, I mean, hi, have you met me? I will keep doing this because I enjoy doing it. Sorry, not sorry. And then there are the proposed red deer cave people, which are most likely a Homo sapiens subspecies or hybrids that date to approximately 17,000 years ago in Southwest China. They could actually be a subspecies between Denisovans and modern humans. It's just not necessarily known. They disappeared around 11,500 years ago, around the start of the Younger Dryas. I'm not sure if that's of any significance, but it could be. We don't know yet. Earlier in the video, I mentioned the archaic Homo sapiens, of which we modern Homo sapiens derive from. But there are differences between us and our archaic ancestor. Modern Homo sapiens emerged around 70,000 years ago and we have kept evolving into the species that we are today. And I mean, as recently as 15,000 years ago, there were key moments in our evolution. And as recently as approximately 10,000 years ago, the genetic mutation for blue eyes occurred. So as you can see that we, as a species, are still evolving. But all Homo sapiens that live in modern times are from the same species. We do have people living in high altitudes for a long time now, and if they continue doing that for like hundreds or thousands of years, they will most likely eventually evolve into a distinctly different species than people living, for instance, in low altitude. Evolution never really stops. It's a continuous flow and will go on until this planet is probably uninhabitable, I think. So yeah, there you have it. The differences between hominids and hominins and the evolutionary tree of us modern humans, homo sapiens. A full video explaining all the splits that occurred and the differences and when they emerged. And I will create videos on all of the species that I mentioned in this video, because let's be honest, we all wanna learn more and I, for one, definitely want to learn more about the Nasher Ramla species in Israel that were discovered in 2021 that I had no idea actually were discovered. I don't remember seeing anything about it in the news. So yeah, I'm going to have to research that. Don't forget to click the link in the description to check out Wandrium and start your free trial today. But with that said, if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you enjoyed watching this video and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner. That's the playlist to all the hominids. Yes, with a D. And I always put links in the description down below or click a video in the end card. I would like to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone supporting me as a channel member or a Patreon. Um, your support means so much to me and I cannot express how grateful I am to all of you. Thank you so much for watching and I think I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, not many bloopers, I think, but 
it doesn't matter because this had to be a little bit of a serious video. I already did the Gorolini, Panini, all that stuff. Homie, no idea. Homie has no idea. Bye, guys.